Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This episode, Simi and I are going to be talking about Modern Age rotation as well as updates to Silver Age. Let's get started. This is episode 458. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. Now, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant dead pain and humor. Over oh, they, six uh, people over think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you with a costume. You absolute fools. I think be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clips is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clips singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, the number 5, for 5% 5 off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Dream like always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, looking at pixel covers and stuff. It is cool. So, uh, Avengers Forever, we say issue 15, has the pixel variant cover. Yeah. Where it just has like hundreds of Marvel characters and funny little little pixel versions. It's a real, like. And there's some deep cuts. Not like Where's Waldo, but yeah, and like. A little bit. Stress your, your comic. Yeah. You know what I hate? I, I hate the like Facebook quiz or whatever. It's like, you'll never be able to name all 10 of these comic characters. And I'm like, eh, I consider myself kind of a comic connoisseur. So well, let's see what kind of deep dives they have. And then number two is like literally Batman. Number yeah. three, it's like, I get it. It's made for people that aren't me. But then why am I see it? Why is the algorithm like, ah, shit to me. this guy that spends... <laughs> A uh, disproportionate amount of his time looking at hero clicks or hero related content, not hero clicks only, but hero related content. He'll struggle with this quiz, but like the cover was actually kind of like a struggle. It's like, mm, who's this? Like when I picked out Fat Cobra, it took yeah, me like dude. 20 minutes to remember his name. Fat Cobra <laughs> for a while. Yeah, don't and don't uh, Google it. He's a comic character. Yeah, don't definitely don't bing it. Yeah, um, don't bing it. <laughs> Uh, all right, Simeon, what made you happy this last week? Now, now Bill's going to duck, duck, go it. You build. <laughs> uh, what made me happy this last week was, man, a lot of stuff happened. So I'm, I'm actually struggling to, like, remember everything. Yeah. I'll just go with, like, what's going to make me happy because uh, later today or maybe tomorrow, depending on when my family decides, we will be going to Kansas City for my nephew's oh, cool. birthday. He's turning the big 1-0. Uh, Ooh, yeah, yeah big benchmark. Milestone. milestone yeah. yeah, he made it a whole decade. I'd... He made it a whole decade. <laughs> yeah. What does that say about your sister? I... Hmm. My nephew, he, he actually made it a decade old. I'm impressed. Yeah. Uh, why? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say about so the way time like changes and stuff. Is the class yes. Gift, right? Yeah, the you get card full yeah. 10 bucks. Yeah, like save that in a couple years, it'll be worthless. <laughs> like, <laughs> here's here's a trick, kid. Inflation's bad, Ooh, so you better you know, age uh, real fast. The worst present ever: a savings bond. Oh, put it. Yeah, I'll put that ten dollars into a CD. There you go. And be like, you don't get it. Like, this will get it'll four point nine percent within a yeah, year. Yeah, I don't think so understand. this is worth even more. Sure, sure I'm only giving you ten dollars today, but next year that'll be ten dollars and forty cents. You also can't use it today, by the way. This is ten dollars <laughs> right. you can use right now. <laughs> No, uh, but yeah, that's okay, right. that's gonna make me happy. We're running down to Kansas City. We're gonna do some Kansas City related things. You guys should go to Jack um, I don't know if you guys do like Kansas City barbecue. I assume one of the best reasons to go to Kansas. City. I mean, I Jack hope so. Stacks is really good. If you, Jack if you haven't been there Stacks. before or not, okay. They do a great uh, a carrot cake okay. dessert, and their and their barbecue is really good too. But yeah, it's, I like, it's I like carrot cakes. The main for reason barbecue place, yeah. But, my family goes on vacation. It's all just almost all. They're like desserts. we we so smoke we the frosting for twenty four yeah, hours in a, a slow roast cake. <laughs> They've got it in like the same uh, the same it's chamber the same as like the, the yeah. Stuff. yeah just <laughs> infused with that, that, that flavor. Smoke. Yeah. All right, on that sounds like it's going to be a fun time. Should be good. Uh what made me happy this last week? Man, it was kind of I don't know. It was a really it was a really busy week. So I haven't had much time to like sit down and and think about really what made me happy. But I'm excited to play Hero Clicks this weekend. We're doing a dumb format, 500 Golden Age, yeah. which I think is, and we're doing it like no holds barred. So to me, uh, there's like two ways to play Golden Age, right? I play the worst figures imaginable, like they're just literally so bad and old. But yeah. Team, or you play like 
the most broken stuff imaginable. You know, like there's that's like kind of like the two extremes for Golden Age. Um, and I think my goal is to it won't be a good team. It's gonna look intimidating, but it's not good. Um, so anybody that goes to our venue is gonna get spoiled right now for him to play. But I think I'm gonna play the zombie team base, but it's at uh, 200 points. So okay. you like can't pop anybody. You can pop like two people off, I think. Right. Literally like just Electro <laughs> or like just Venom Electro or like Electro and like the scroll. And then like the rest is gonna be the four chase zombies. <laughs> oh, okay. And just have like the most expensive team mm. there instead. But, I mean, yeah. yeah. But like the zombie team base at like 200 is so bad. Yeah, it's, it's kind of actual garbage because they can do only one action. Yeah, for it, so they can just move all the, the way. The whole thing was like, yeah, being able to do multiples with oh, this yeah. oh, stupid long I dial was and stuff. Four hundred. Yeah, and that's that's like a totally different story. Yeah. Right? I'm popping people off at full. I can pop off zombie super scroll at full, like whatever else. But like, you pop off zombie super scroll, he's like a back, you know three damage something like that he's got like three clicks of life or something if you pop him off at the yellow line yeah so, i'm really, he's, I'm just really it, excited to play when he was never like a super great defense thing it was more about like he could get oh, food no. tokens yeah, super yeah, easy yeah. he could super super duper easy but like also at that cool. isn't it at like different point values he can pick different powers or no, like no, no, you can always pick four you can always pick you four always pick okay four. you just have an increased chance of hurting yourself that's right powers you pick it's yeah. the whole deal okay but yeah, so I'm either going to play something like that, or I'm going to play Power Elite, where you can be the entire map is a double power action for everything, which I think would be really funny. Yeah. So I do like my to. Power Elite with new clones. Right now. Just like the bloated point value of 500. I also built yeah. a 500 point Avengers team, which might be cool. So I just like building. So I'm just having a fun time. We need to now. put it to like a vote uh, either this week okay. or next for like what the format because now that we've kind of like the venue's kind of established we have like regulars yeah um people are kind of getting the hang of like the new rules and stuff it's time to like start doing like some wacky builds like you know oh yeah i think so you've got your classic build a comic accurate team and then you've got like uh we need to start doing some know. house rules too like if you build like a, a comic accurate team or something if they don't have a keyword they become a theme team maybe they can use like a theme prop once per turn or something yeah stuff like that would be really cool yeah like they don't have a keyword for this team but it is comic accurate so then it would get like a, a bonus right stuff that's not in the game that like rewards you for doing comic accurate we can stuff. play the cool. the classic clicks where it's like all right everyone forget all the rules that we just taught you rules, yeah we're going by 2017 nice. the classic era of hero clicks as some would yeah, say awful. you know out of the two decades that hero clicks has been we consider classic the last like six years yeah, five years ago yeah that's, we're truly the most classic hero clicks what's a flight stand uh-huh yeah it ain't classic we don't know yeah nothing. you don't know nothing there's not even you don't even have atas in classic clicks they don't have uh oh yeah, yeah feats it's... um i got feats yeah that, <laughs> i don't know they're they're missing out on like some truly uh, classic uh yeah. rules and stuff so not so classic are they <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead, jump into the news here. Simeon, watch list, ban lists, rotation lists, oh, yeah. Silver Age, they're all hot keywords, buzz buzzwords, if you would. Uh, WizKids made an article today. They're talking about all this upcoming Silver Age stuff. They're also talking about the rotation. So it's a pretty big announcement. I'll just go ahead and read it off here. Silver Age announcements, rotation news. We're happy to announce an expansion of our sponsorship of the ROC series. The ROC, the Rock, or Realms Open Championship, is a hero hooks tournament circuit that runs parallel to the WizKids Road to Worlds tournaments. In 2023, the ROC will run the official hero hooks Silver Age circuit. We're excited to begin fostering more dedicated Silver Age format and to grow Silver Age into premier format alongside Modern Age. For more information on the ROC, on the Rock, Please visit their website. It's got a link to their website. Cool, cool. For more information on Silver Age, please visit The Win. There's a link to The Win. Uh, so basically, they're just saying there's more There's more Silver Age events. The ROC is going yeah. to the Silver Age events. Rock has already talked about getting more state tournaments happening this right. year. So that's finally becoming back into full swing. Hopefully soon with monthly OPs coming back, with state tournaments coming back. Hopefully we see WKOs and everything also come back and follow, and we get a normal, back to normal tournament like role, a, a tournament setup. Where yeah. We're like, oh yeah, there's the fall, there's the summer, there's like the, the when, winter ones. Yeah, you know, like we like last episode we talked about um, 
the return of organized play and oh, like yeah. LEs and stuff like that. So um, obviously WizKids is trying to go forward, trying to promote this. And I think we always, I mean, didn't always, but most recently knew the ROC was going to be like the silver, like the main silver component of hero clicks. Like any like major silver tournaments were going to be pretty much like their exclusive thing or they would exclusively be silver. Um, yeah. But yeah, it is cool that we're going to have, you know, they say, they mention uh, run parallel to the WizKids Road to Worlds tournaments. I don't know if that just so, means yeah. nationals and, you know, like nationals across the world. Right. And then also... Uh, I hope that means WKO. Yeah, you know, I do. I, want it to I know. I want it to like mean more than just like the... Because really, outside of uh, ROC and nationals... That, like that's the end of the road. that is the road to world it's that's exactly it's it, you yeah. know it's not a lot um it would be cool to see some more stuff some could argue the ipf tournament is truly a road to world i mean yeah quite literally quite literally a uh, someone two worlds it's like people to worlds and that game shoots and ladders it's like a ladder that goes straight to worlds for pretty, at least one player dang yeah. awesome ladder yeah yeah <laughs> uh but yeah so that that's the main thing um that's the bulk of like what they added. That's really uh, what they're saying. The rest of the article is just a little bit about rotation and Silver Age bands and some Silver Age erratas. Right. But Simi, you wanted to look like the ban list first on Silver Age. So, so we're adding to the ban list. The current ban list, and even though this article is official, WizKids, yada yada, until it's listed on the win, it's not official. So the current official ban list, and this could be changed because it looks like this was last updated June 5th of 2021. So... Uh, no, I guess there's been more stuff posted since then. But um, the current ban list, as per the official WizKids rules, is all special terrain dials. Note this does not apply to special terrain that does not have a dial. So uh, WWE ring, WWE uh, ring. Boxing, boxing ring, ring, and then, of course, all the new terrain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the WizKids convention exclusive Blackbird resource dial. So you can still play the Blackbird, but not with the resource dial, which won't really matter because once we get to yeah. other stuff um yeah that it'll be apparent fast force joker's wild penguin which i can't ex- can't remember exactly what he does this is not the one that spits out the penguins it's the one, the one that like lets you make an attack against him yes you, get, like, get you can you, okay token. yeah you can move the penguin favor token for attacking him so yeah. like a friendly character next to him has yeah like free make an attack against the, him the, the ability to attack a friendly character is just so insane. Yeah, yeah there's not a lot of characters that can do that so uh he does kind of break the game and leaves an exploit open uh two i don't really agree with because i think the rules changes have hampered them enough it's adw chase hawkeye the matt fraction one that can mm-hmm. used to be able to pop off and just go uh guns blazing across the board bows blazing i guess uh target you know every time he hit he could target a new person yeah, running shot again yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Prime Vulture, who likewise, once he started KOing, I think he is, I mean, he's not half the bird he used to be. No. Neither of them are. They're both bird, bird both bird based. Mm. Very true. Wizkid has an anti-bird agenda. Mm. Uh, next up is, on the ban list, is Jason Wingard, though. And this, I don't know, is it because he has the chain mind control? I think it, that's what it Or is it down, because... Right? Hawkeye, Vulture, Wingard... I mean, it does thing. seem they like that. Attacks, right? uh, but also, Jason just has an infinitely useful uh, bring-in-any-bystander ability for free, where, so, like, some characters I have to power action or reason, get on, like, the bottom dial because or whatever. They had to, ever since they made yeah. that, they had to think every time they made a bystander, yeah. is this broken with Jason Wingard? Yeah, you want, like, a character, like... Not that he's, like, really good, but uh, say, like, Mr. Negative. Yeah. Um, let's say, like, the negative spirit that he spits out only came out, like, when he was KO'd, so it's, like, hard to get it out there. You, like, lose points, and then you yeah. get it out there. But, like, let's say it was, like, a 12 for 5 or something. Something dumb. Jason Wingard just five, makes like it for free. Galactus. Yeah, kind of like Franklin Galactus. <laughs> like, like, kind of like Franklin Galactus. Like, tw- <laughs> what is he, 12 range, 8 range? He's, like, an 8 range, 12 for 5, pulse wave, yeah. 20 defense, and pervious. Uh, also, if there was like, like specific that. text on the character's card that did something to the bystander, yeah, it doesn't matter. Jason doesn't like do that. Yeah. The bystander, if it the bystander itself has a trait, he does. But continuing because none of that matters. Um, those are on ban list. Uh, next up is the 
Avengers, Age of Ultron, AU ID, uh, Captain America, the Shield Level 7 ID, the Shield Level 1 ID, uh, the U.S. Agent ID, and the Green Lantern ID. So the Captain America, U.S. Agent, and Green Lantern all did the same thing, I believe? No. no? Uh, just Captain Green Lantern. Did Captain Green thing. Lantern did the same. They both did ESD, and then whenever a friendly character hit with an attack, you added, you plus modified one to the action total. The action total. Plus one. Yeah. U.S. Agent gets rid of, like, just board wide. They can't use barriers. So oh. Loud whatever which is insanely strong. that would yeah how much barriers in the game right yeah. now it turn one really i call him no in for like him. no reason yeah and then turn two like yep you're not barriered at all yeah uh shield level seven and level one just didn't work anymore because they, they no longer yeah. use the real name on the back of the id uh i'm not gonna go over the watch list because obviously yeah. the announcement covers like what they would have changed to any of these characters but there is a watch list all id cards was listed on there um and then i'm not going to get into the erratas and stuff because we we have like yeah new erratas so the the previous erratas were for surter carnage and mangog uh which just fixed the way that they're free yeah um they're, they're, they're essentially, still, their as, after hate. resolutions they things worked. Fix, I still hate that they haven't fixed. How yeah, after resolutions worked. they've they've fixed them going forward just with better yeah, verbiage, with but, better verbiage but not. Still, uh, yeah, yeah. Still bothers me. Uh, so new bands. So currently, um, in this article, these will hopefully be updated on the win. But what they have listed as getting banned is. The Wonder Woman 80 Scarab Chase. So Scarab is a potent force in modern and has been useful counterbalance against equipped characters. In silver, however, there are too many ways to enhance his positive effects while covering his weaknesses, leading to less interactive games. For this reason, Scarab will be banned in Silver Age. Good, um, yeah, being able to copy equipment is huge and then target through uh, either equipped characters or objects, whichever, is pretty wild from across the map. Uh, next up, and I don't really... I don't really understand this one, but I, I guess maybe I'm just not thinking of, like, the exploits. But it's the uh, JLU Prime Batman, old microphone Batman, who, when he came out, like, he was on a lot of teams. Wild, dude. Did I a mean, lot of crazy stuff, liked, yeah. Dude. What was it, a 12 attack mind control across the board, and you could dra- drop the... Uh... Though. He was, like, an 11 for one. Oh, so you'd have yeah. to put him on, like, elevated, yank it out from under him now? That's, I guess... Or knock him into a wall. Uh, something that we haven't discussed but like something that is like interesting for activation clicks or just getting uh characters without reducers to like click two or three if you need to is yeah you can now have them walk up to like an elevated piece and then pull it out from under them pk it out from under them stuff like that so uh but let's see their reason uh unlike scarab he is not limited to how much damage he can deal yeah scarab is limited when he shoots through uh the objects uh, combined with the rules change allowing assigning equipment during force construction and the return of knockback damage, some teams in testing were capable of dealing 5 pen damage to every opposing character as soon as first turn immunity ended, which is hilarious, but bad for the game, I suppose. Yes. Batman is simply too powerful to be allowed in a format with as many options as Silver Age and is being banned. So, yeah, he... Uh, I can't remember what blocked his line of fire. Was it just characters? He only ignored like hindering. That was it. Was it just hindering? It was so just it just hindering. it was very dependent on map, I yeah, guess. It was okay. Huge for map. WD Arena indoor though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh next up, all ID cards. Yeah. Big ban. They banned all ID cards, which there was like a soft ban or maybe it was the ROC had officially banned them or something. I but the ROC did ban them a yeah, while ago. But now like as per WizKids, all ID cards are banned. And that is the the end of the new bands. So just those three, well, just those two characters, and then all ID cards, which is quite a few ID cards. Is, and a I'm a little upset. I'm a little sad. I think ID cards made silver that little like tinge of because now it's just more unique than modern. Yeah, now it's just modern with uh, old retaliators and you know some yeah, old hotness that. here and there. Yeah. I Whereas like ID cards made it its own unique like truly i hate id cards i think playing with them and against them is like awful of course but having them actually made it a much more unique format than just extended modern you know um yeah but now on to the erratas uh so with the changes on theme team rules some notable characters no longer work as intended for the second time 
<laughs> mind you. Kind of funny. Uh, the following characters uh, are receiving a similar errata to orient them away from theme team probability control. So I'll just list off the characters. They all get the same for the most part. Uh, so Prime High Evolutionary, Captain Venom, Yelena Belova, Spymaster. They all, all have, uh, if they were on their like designated theme team, uh, instead of like the theme team probs getting boosted, instead of getting plus to your role or anything like that, they now have probability control, but only if they're on said theme team. Um, so Spymaster has a unique modifier where characters with the spy keyword also modify defense plus one if occupying hindering terrain. Uh, Yelena is, yeah, just probability control, but only if she's on a theme team. Doesn't have to be a specific keyword, well, just a theme team that matches hers, I'm assuming. Um, Captain Venom is prob, but only for monsters. High Evo is animal, only prob. So it just gives them prob. And then this character, which is Star Trek. Uh, I was like, who is Sella? Star Trek, what was it? Boldly Go set. So, yeah, the non-prime 018. Uh, hers used to be leadership. When she succeeds, you may instead choose that opponents can't use theme prob. It is now when she uses leadership and succeeds, you may instead choose that opposing characters can't use prob. Wow, this is like which is change, it's like an actual buff. It's super That's good, really good yeah. because if that pops off and your opponent only has, because like most of the time you only have printed prob now. There's not yeah. like characters that just hand out prob or maybe you have an equipment or something. But she just straight up takes away all prob for a turn if she succeeds, yeah. which is pretty good. And then. Uh, just not the final one. Like the prob stuff, just a little bit for you. Yeah. Getting these last ones. I would say, you know, I like it just now that they work. That's really cool. But it does. It's really soft. It's it's worse than if they had normal prob on dial, but it is more focused on a team building aspect. I do wish it would have been something strong. You know, I think monsters could have come back as a keyword and been really strong. If Captain Venom was like everybody on the monster team gets probability control. Now that might have been too strong because you can put about a million monsters on a monster team. There's so many cheap. Yeah, I was talking to Kevin about the change to theme team probability control and we both kind of agreed that totally getting rid of it really sucked. And his idea was that if you're on a theme team, you have one use of prob. Like you can basically re-roll one attack roll per turn, right? Or one attack roll or just basically re-roll. You had one use of prob per turn, right? Which was global Instead of, you know, it was to instead solve their of, problem yeah, where it's like, oh, track. you just you just burn your three right away. That's right. that sucks. You know, we hate that you're just going through it right away just to get an alpha off or to protect yourself. If that, you know, is WizKids' problem with prob, Kevin was like, well, now you just have one. And it's, it's obviously way better because it's for the entire game. But now you only have one a turn. Yeah. So it's like a captain uh, uh, resilient prob, basically. Oh, okay. Where it's like yeah. a once per turn thing. Yeah. And I think that's that to me seems fair. It seems and good. It also it, does something that most changes don't do, and that's it gives a boost to all one man armies. Yeah. Where like if you know, if you're a one man army, you're an automatic theme team. And then yeah, just having that character yeah. basically a traded prob. It would uh, help them out. Yeah, that, you know. I do like that though. So I think that would be a good change. It would prevent people from having to keep track of them. I've seen like in like tournaments before. Yeah, they're like, Oh, how many have I used? Yeah. You know, am I at one yeah, or two? I, or... I usually try to use a dice, but I've made the mistake of not keeping oh, I track think we've all two. used four theme probs before yeah, in a turn it's definitely accident. probably not happened. in a turn but you know in a tournament or something in a game yeah but yeah so i would have liked to see a change like that you know maybe giving it to everybody is too strong but something like this because right now you're really just giving that character worse prob oh, it's, it's better than the ability doing nothing don't get me wrong it's infinitely worse than theme prob used to be yeah. because like yes they can use it every turn which is but... nice like one of the cool things about having theme team probs was obviously like they said being able to like go with like an alpha but not even just an alpha like literally just a character out of my line of fires making an attack and i could prob it because they were on a theme team yeah which so like you know sometimes i'd overextend or i'd go to like a place where i didn't group all my like friendly characters there all my support pieces because i knew i'll be able to prob this yep. because of theme team probs um but yeah now You'd have to have line of sight to like the character that's making the attack, which I I don't know what off the top of my head I don't know. But do you know what uh, Captain Venom's range is? Is it zero? It's four. It's four. He's got to be four so range. It's, yeah, it's the minimum now, yeah. which is real rough. Yeah, I mean it's not great. 
Uh, the change to like the minimum on prop already hurt a lot of characters. I know like Black Cat in this new set, uh, she's got zero printed range because she has a giant reach. She ability. has two range. Does she have? She has two oh. range. And, I thought she had okay. two range and giant reach. Is what I thought. Maybe she doesn't. Yeah. But they do that a lot with people that have giant reach. They also give him that yeah. in range. So maybe but, like, she does. Getting outranged or not being able to prob an attack because your prob piece is four squares or not four. Your prob piece is like six squares away from an opposing character who's shooting at you or something. Uh, six range isn't like wild to see. And so nope. it's pretty easy to outrange characters that are close combat like probers, like close combat oriented and prob. Yeah. Um, and then especially like in silver, you'll see like unseen and um, maybe not unseen. They got as that much, big eight but, range uh, prob, eight range, nine range, what's, whatever. Yeah, what's uh, Oz, Mr. Oz? Like for <sighs> 12, sure. 12, it's like sees through everything. Like, do you not just like automatically consider him with every silver? Build? I know. Should he not be on also? Like, him and Felix Faust should be in the consideration for a watch list on silver, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think Felix Especially, Faust is way too strong. I think anything that has a crazy good prob effect in a world where prob is not easily accessed as much anymore like you have to actually go out and grab a figure mm -hmm. to like do it but like yeah imagine i have a team and i i only put two dedicated prob pieces on it and then i come against felix faust and the one prob i could use gets like rolled and no effect or like one damage that is not great like no nope. <laughs> and you know obviously against felix faust prob just was already kind of hurting but then uh you factor in like mr oz who can basically map wide prob now um, you know, he has to move out like what, like four squares to see the whole map. But once he does that, then yeah, uh, that's a real rough combo where Felix Faust, if he's dead center in the map, he's got full map reach too. Yep. He's eight range. He's everything eight, within so eight and it's a 16 by 16, like assuming you're on a 16, by 16, yeah. I guess. But yeah, both of those guys together, um, it's, it and that's only 70 hurting. points, yeah. also, by the way, in case you're curious. Yeah. It also, and whatever, Mr. Oz also says, oh, yeah, nice four-range uh, TK. No, it's actually a power action to sidestep now yeah. is what it is. Basically. Yeah, that sucks. Sorry, bro. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think Mr. Oz and Felix Faust 100% need to be on the watch list. At the very least, the watch list for Silver Age going forward. And maybe they will update the watch list after Huntington's happens, I would imagine. Right. After we Use get that some silver like to pop off. Semi-testing grounds, even though that's like Silver's biggest event, you know. Mm. But it can be kind of the semi-testing grounds. But that's basically all I wanted to talk about for, for those guys. We can get into the rest of the changes now, which are really cool and they make sense. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, right. Those all of those were similar effects. Kind of, obviously, yeah, prob based on theme prob. If it's not printed in like the win, then it's not official. But as a judge, if anything had similar wording, I would just rule it with like the new way they are doing these. Like you know, I don't know if they missed any. I think they got Yelena. They got Spy. There's probably like something that's in silver that they missed, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. But yeah, I would just rule it similar. Uh, or like in the way that I assume they would rule it. That's probably not at like an official event, like a huge event, but I don't run those, so I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, <sighs> next up in Aratas, though, and this is one I'm really stoked for. Glad I kept hold of this guy. It's the ABPI 074, the Ultra Chase Thanos. That's right. Why not give him a nice boost? So he used to be able to start with the Ego Gem, and that was it. Like you could find ways. I almost tried to make a way like a team where you could drop all the gems have yeah, like have like different Professor people X start with swap gems and whatever and yeah, yeah. You, you drop all the gems and then collect them and then you finally have them well now you don't have to so his new trait is artifact from the interdimensional cosmic vampire during force construction thanos may be assigned a s011 ego gem without paying its cost if he is assigned the Ego Gem, he may also be assigned any number of Infinity Gems by paying their costs. So they each cost 10, but obviously you don't need, like, the full gamut. I'm not probably playing the uh, Space Gem. Um, I'm probably going, like, Reality, Power, Time, maybe Soul. That's 40 points, and that's a pretty... <laughs> At that point, he's, like, got a pretty decent boost. Uh, Ego Gem was just... You pick a combat value, and he gets plus one to it. Yeah. The rest all had an assigned combat value that they boosted or something similar in addition to, like, the rest of their effect. But uh, let's look at his, like, lower dial because 
I think I want to say that like on was he like one sixty ninety five or something, something like that. Yeah. So let's see here. He the top dial is one sixty. Yep. Mystics power cosmic. He starts with three clicks of invincible, and then his bottom dial at one hundred and ten. Oh, one ten, so dang, not super great. But his one one ten starts on click four, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where he's an eighteen impervious with sidestep. So yeah, I mean, bumping him up to a nineteen or a twenty with the ego gem and like potentially soul gem is pretty easy. And then of course power gem, he'd be a twelve for five, just always constantly. <laughs> Uh, reality gem gives him another lightning bolt and then a use of perplex uh so he's a seven range one or seven range two, two lightning targets. bolts yeah with yeah. with a perplex so he plus can be the discrete a, perplex a the discreet double or, perplex you yeah know? you know not even counting in the discreet yeah, bystander that her. potentially plus twos him uh i think it's like a fairly fun thing to try and run like honestly i really like this and i can't wait uh to bust mine out i all this time kept all my infinity gems, some duplicates, but like all my infinity gems. And I kept him because I was like, just really liked the set, I guess. Yeah. I didn't really like think there was something big coming around the corner, but now I'm actually, you know, if I play in a silver event, I think I'm going to build around him. I think it's oh, I would a say so. fun enough mechanic. Uh, and at 110 points, he's not like your whole team. No. Obviously, you know, he's got protected outwit. He can't reduce pen damage. So like maybe he gets one shotted, but there's not a lot that can dish out seven pen yeah. damage to be fair you'll be paying an extra 10 for each other that's true gem, right so, so yeah he's he's if one you do like power like reality or something 40. that's an extra yeah. yeah he's probably like 150 do do? power reality soul power reality soul time for prob time yeah because well. i definitely want uh, i guess he yeah. already has perplex, he does already have so perplex. you would only want reality for the extra bolt or tk well so his, maybe you don't do reality uh yeah because you can't use perplex twice no. so from reality TFR. might be a pass uh, when he uses it to target a friendly character, uh, they can use Power Cosmic until your next turn, which is solid. It is good. Uh, when he uses it to target an opposing character, they can't use Willpower, which is big, or, or Protected yeah. Outwit. So he is one of the only characters that gets rid of Protected Outwit. Not Safeguard Outwit, though. Mm, true. It is worded to say, all caps, Protected, which is the new Safeguard. Uh, I so would you can't it. stop a Power Cosmic person. Yeah. I mean, you can keep him from rolling Willpower, which would be... That'd be really good help, on, yeah. like, Colossals, because the only way to really get a Colossal to miss their willpower roll is to somehow remove willpower from them. Huh. But, yeah, being a, a 12 for 5 with just the power gem, uh, 20 defense with just the soul and ego, um, I'm probably not boosting his speed ever because he's just a sidestep. Yeah, sorry, Space Stone. I, we don't really... Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Passenger 2 is cool enough where I could potentially find a use for that, but I don't think I'm... I don't think I'm putting that on, like, the build. No. Um, is there something we're missing? Mind? Oh, yeah, I guess Attack there's plus, plus one. one. Mind control, in cap. So, I mean, I guess if you did have the reality for the oh, yeah, plus all the one... the 10 or higher stuff. Yeah. If you had the reality for the extra bolt... And then mind gem so that you could mind control two people with a thirteen attack because yeah I'm assuming power gem so he's uh, a twelve and then mind is giving him a thirteen because either close or range he's always got close combat expert range combat expert with the power gem that's I mean I don't know if this right I don't think it rivals uh legacy Thanos but it is a very fun. Uh, set this of, like, is a stuff. more cool and thematic Thanos in oh, my mind. Sure. This kind of makes him the go-to. I think it becomes this dude or the AF Thanos, honestly. And if you don't want to have to worry about the whole mortal token mission point thing, this Thanos is going to be expensive. He's still around 120, 100 something bucks, I think, hundred ish. Yeah, which is kind of what Ultra Chases go to. Captain Marvel's like in the seventies and sixties now. He's gotten way cheap. Same thing. White Rabbit is way cheap for an Ultra Chase. You know, but like this Thanos was always one of the more expensive ultra chases, just like period. Yeah. I mean, he's the only I don't one know ever come with an equipment. That's true. Yeah, that is true. I guess we should be glad that like I was the I Arata almost said Deadpool, say, uh, but Deadpool comes like the the, whatever oh, the thing. rainbow marker. Yeah, it's yeah. not an equipment though. Yeah. We should be glad that it didn't like errata just the ego gem to say, oh gosh, if this if like character just the is assigned gem, the ego wild. gem. Yeah, thankfully it's his trait. Yeah. Because to be fair, I thought it was the ego gem that lets you 
equip more, was it? Uh, and it might be. Because, yeah, because uh, this old trait just says you can start the game with the Ego Gem equipped. The Ego lets you... Yeah, equipped with any yep. number. So, yeah, it's a good yeah. thing they put the errata on him and not Smart on the call. gem. Smart call, whiz kids, because that, that would have been broken. The Ego Gem is the first 60-point object. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, because, uh, I mean... 70-point object, I guess, actually. Ego, power, points each. mind. Yeah, 70 I mean, points. depending on, like, the character, but... That's wild, That's dude. Infinite stat boost. That brings me back to like entities and resources where like a hundred points of your build would be like entities and then a resource. You yeah. know, like back then it's like you would play a battery, you'd play an entity, and then like the majority of your team was just literally that. Like, yeah. Seventy points of or I'm of like equipment. building I'm building to like two forty five because yeah, I have right? six or yeah, six ID cards, one of them. Oh yeah, that two ID like cards. That. Oh man, what a wild time. Way less figures on the force back then. Now it's like we have a million figures on the force, which also makes me think they should reconsider getting, you know, uh, Hawkeye and Vulture off that because man, yeah. it's dumb the amount of figures. Anyways, uh, I talked about the next one, which is also equipment based, which also is along the same lines as the Ego Gem Thanos change. All right, the next errata, and this one's similar to the Thanos like Ego Gem kind of thing. It's for. The Remaker Influence Spin Spectral Nightbringer Daemonic Incandescent Lightning The Liar and Zero Rings. So originally they used to say an equipped character may be equipped with a second object if it's also a Mandarin ring. It still says that, but in addition to that, the new errata says during force construction characters may be assigned two equipment if both are Mandarin rings. So that was something I don't I think there were a few builds where people would collect or pick up more than one ring. They would equip more than one. Um, yeah, and now it's just I can start assigned and what they're all five points. Yeah, these are some of the best ten point objects in existence now. Dude. Yeah, there's um, some real good. Con- I mean, they're always agree. were. Oh yeah, absolutely. But starting with them now is like pretty solid. Um, so I know what is it? There Nightbringer is that's the, the stealth free smoke cloud for yeah, two. Stealth free smoke for two. Spin is obviously force blast the free place. No, that's, that's influence. Excuse me. For- Spin is free place. But influence uh, TK, is the force yeah, blast one, free knockback one, one. TK free place um, within three squares in line of fire, which is almost as good as regular TK. Is another cheap way to get an extra bolt now? Oh no, no, it doesn't give you an extra bolt. But if you do use multiple bolts to target, you do give them Deal an extra plus one damage, damage yeah. which is cool to each person. So uh, yeah, the, the rings are great. Yeah, you and do they that used with to be uh, crazy expensive to get a full set of them, but now they're really not that spendy anymore. I don't which know, is, is cool. Is lightning good enough to play on um, the prime? Green Goblin when he like energy oh, explodes. Well, you could it, roll you, a I six. Rather, I think you'd rather have the pumpkin bombs. No, no, because wait, no, he does. He doesn't have uh, energy. Ex- wait, he does have energy explosion, doesn't he? Yeah, I guess it would be the same effect. It would then. be basically the exact same. Wait, no, one's free and then one. The isn't. pumpkin bomb says three damage. You deal three damage. This would just deal an additional rolls, plus one. Like so, he rolls for oh, his damage. You're so, right. This would be better. So it'd be like I roll like a four, and yeah. then it ends up being five yeah. to each hit character. All right. Um, All right, Simeon. Yeah, Remaker, obviously, the original, the one that first Dude, came out. Remaker. Poison Shape Change, which is it's already one of the nuttiest things for five points. Such an awesome combo of powers. I mean, it's literally just poison two. Poison Shape it's... Change can't be worth five points. You know, like, together. You're telling me Poison and Shape Change are 2.5 points? That's oh, That's yeah. what they're worth? Yeah, that's what, that's what they're worth for uh, uh, putting it on a whole dial of people. Yeah. Uh, Traded Poison Shape Change is basically what you're saying is five points. I mean... So good compared to uh, the cloak, though plasticity sidestep flight, also five. Oh, that is also true. But that is yeah. yeah. You have to you have to combine that with the fact that I can be you can get so it's like I can have poison shape change, and then also for an additional five points, that character can have any of the other effects. Yeah, which poison shape change nightbringer ultimate defensive little little thing. You know. Yeah, super boost. Uh, no one used this. Yeah, no one used demonic. Targeting hindering when they carry a single character hits. No one used demonic. Sorry, demonic. Attack minus. Sorry, whoever designed demonic. No one. Yeah, <laughs> I assume whoever designed these designed all of them. Though, yeah, like why wouldn't they? Are they this not one just based good. on like? Well, no, they're not based on the original ones. No, they do totally different. Yeah. They have also different names in the originals. That's true. Yeah, they're like all different. Yeah, because well, there was like the Melter Ring. Or something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. The liar, mind control. That one was good. Minimum range value Ten when you're using mind, mind control. control outwit and perplex ten. That's pretty solid. It was cool. Your minimum range value being ten now instead of mm-hmm. yeah. 
that might be something that they want to watch list is uh oh yeah in a world of, where minimum values are all fours giving somebody the ability to have minimum 10 on most things is most things that you would use i guess it's only missing like perplex or not perplex it's only missing like prob um but yeah that's the end of the current uh erratas so that's silver wasn't a whole lot that's all silver age stuff though yeah that's true but uh now and that's cool i'm cool with all the silver age changes i do think they should obviously what we mentioned what we think should be on the watch list what we think maybe should be off the watch list or non-banned or banned blah 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 etc etc i think they should take all that stuff we talked about into account i think it's important but now, the big cool thing, maybe the, the craziest thing, really, and this is the first time it's ever happened for me in my time of playing Hero Clicks, but we have a net that's all about modern age rotation. Lastly, we have an announcement regarding the yearly modern age rotation. In previous years, sets were rotated out on July 1st, shortly after U.S. Nationals. To be fair, U.S. Nationals wasn't in July last year. It was in like August or, yeah, it was in like August or June, wasn't yeah. it? It was like right wherever Gen Con was. Now, the idea, the idea behind this was that by doing so, a challenge would be posed to our best players to adapt a new metagame as we headed into the World Championship. This year, we're trying something new. In 2023, Modern Age Rotation will not happen until the conclusion of 2023 World Championship. The reasoning behind this is twofold. First, it gives countries outside the USA more time to host their own national championships. Secondly, it elevates the World Championship into the ultimate refinement of the metagame. The best players with their best teams, pitting themselves against each other, with all the practice of the previous year behind them. We'll have more information about the World Championship as we get closer to it, including which sets will be rotating at its conclusion. This is insane. We might end up with a year where we have three modern DC sets. I know. That's, Isn't that crazy? That that's, is, that'll uh, be the first time that has literally in like ever a while, been a yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've got Wonder Woman 80th, that Batman will almost definitely rotate. That's got to, and then we've got Batman team up, and then that DC Notorious. Or I mean, whatever it was. What we were thinking was, if they're going to wait this long for rotation, this is going to be a harsh rotation. I feel, yeah, I feel like before um, everybody was thinking, oh yeah, Rise and Fall or Wonder Woman. That's right. the cutoff. Those are going to go. But now the rotation that cut all IDs and all WWE was kind of that like a was harsh, harsh one. That was harsh. But I feel I feel like because you know because they that were going a year forward early with for a, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, they were going with like a new meta game, a new like design kind of style, uh, what have you, where IDs were out of the picture, uh, WWE was out of the picture, and they were going forward like with this new set of rules, and they didn't want to be hampered with the old stuff. I do feel like this is going to be one last hurrah. And they're pushing silver and like making silver better because they don't want to make people mad when they quite literally are going to ban everything up to like Batman team up. That's like you think? I I don't know, but I feel I like see that's it. possible. I, oh, because that was really when they started designing with new maps in mind. Yeah. Right, Batman team up because they had that for the starter game at the very least. Everything Man. in those, in, everything from I mean, obviously it's just two sets right now, but everything Batman team up and then. Uh, Beyond Amazing. Batman Team Up Beyond Amazing, yeah. Those two sets designed with like, well, assumedly designed with like the new map size in mind, also with the new equipment rules in mind. And if they just like clean up all of that, it would be, I'm not going to say it's like a healthier game, but it would be like a make more sense uh, as far as like going forward. And then they don't have to worry about waiting two years for old maps to retire so that like the figures have like, you know, six speed charge or whatever. Yeah. Don't have to crawl all the way across like a twenty four square map. Like right. that kind of thing. So miserable. I do think it Black would be from ABPI. Or yeah, from we, Avengers we, Forever. We've seen Wheels of Vengeance, we have Avengers sixtieth, and then we've seen Notorious. Notorious Those are so big three coming out this we would year. Only, we would enter a, into a time where we potentially only have five modern sets, which oh, would gosh. be the smallest well, after, amount of after modern Worlds sets is gonna be before time wheels of vengeance because that's like october release or whatever right right so four modern sets yeah wild man super wild i but i'm i would dig it i would understand i would would like it too yeah when modern is more compact it's specific this set this set this set it's less of the whole oh yeah we need flash from here we need these dudes from tennis it also makes these guys silver so much more 
like important as like a game like or honestly as and a, dude uh, with how style. much of a uh, with how much of a hassle like tarot cards were at worlds yeah i could totally see them rotating or that early yeah. as well but man that takes away so much stuff it would like, yeah it would at drop ten of it swords to, to like without nothing. ten of swords the meta is totally different without tarot cards without apocalypse genesis without all the swords yeah. without so much stuff the meta currently is like way way different to be fair without batman it's also way way different yeah. the rings are crazy the lanterns are crazy um definitely water Woman's nuts you know like all that stuff is, is I, wild i would understand why people because if they did that and i'm not you know obviously i have no clue that's just what i would guess for judging from literally like one previous rotation thing yeah but if they did that i would understand the level of salt that would come their way but at the same time, yeah, the you drop four hundred dollars on yeah, Apoc Genesis because so many, yeah, so many people would be. I literally just bought this team for Worlds, <laughs> then like you know, a week after Worlds, they rotated it, so it's only like viable in silver. If they make silver a more important part of their like road to Worlds and stuff, then it's um, fine. Then you, it's, you'll feel less yeah. like you waste your money. I I hope because I think if they if that's their game plan and they go through with it, and then. Uh, silver isn't like it's still like on like the back burner as far as yeah. like events and stuff go people don't care about it as much then um there's gonna be some real angry people like and i would it would be justified anger in my opinion but that's the point right of like anything that's golden age silver age these quote unquote legacy formats lifetime formats like magic has like magic you gross has like commander right, <laughs> right. which is like everything or whatever i don't know don't correct me Something, if you if you yeah. know about magic and you want to correct me don't because i don't care um but like that's like their old format silver yeah. is our old format that's actually officially recognized in some capacity unlike golden age which is like we don't do yeah. not care to we try to balance talk about gold we're not going to balance super scroll and felix faust and whatever else that's yeah. absolutely not going to happen you know um but Silver Age, the point of that is to give value to your collection. The point of Legacy cards is to give value to your collection for being a collector, for right. being with the game for all these years. So if Silver can be a more consistent format, a format that totally matters, you know, it had a small showing at Worlds, which I think it was like the biggest side event, and it had really good prizing. Um, and then, of course, there's Huntington's. But if we can make that matter more than just those two times out of the year, and we can give value to your Silver Age collections... Totally fine with the yeah. heavy modern age rotation. Totally cool with me. So things they would need to make it actually important is um, somebody somewhere needs to figure out the ROC points or WKO points or whatever. That's a headache, dude. Like we need a we need a simple scoring system. We need a like obviously like a point cap, and that would be like you know the qualifier at Worlds. Mm -hmm. Once you hit that, you don't get any more. It wouldn't make sense. Um, I was looking at it like last year before Worlds, and there's people with like over 300 points, people at 300 points, yeah. and I get like they didn't, they didn't um, delete people's points or like reset them or whatever because of like 2020 and like forward. So like you had all of those points. I even had enough that I was like over qualified for Worlds. I'm like, why you are barely, we bothering with this? What is whatever. it? <laughs> what does it give you? Yeah, what are these good boy points worth after you've already <sighs> qualified tendies, for? Good boy yeah. Points. Like, there's no bonus to, like, being double qualified for Worlds or more. Uh, and it, what, guarantees you a buy or something. Yeah. Like, we don't, I guess we don't know. If they don't do grinders and it's just a buy. That's another thing. Like, that's that's one thing we talked about back when Worlds happened, like, right after and at Worlds was, I know we were talking to, like, Anthony, like, what would be, like, a good, like, version? Because I think it was over 60%. Like the field had, had a buy, had a buy, and yeah. people that made top cut was also yeah. Major, there's only like four or five people that didn't have a buy, yeah. But that and, was big because that was a low scoring meta game during yeah. worlds, and that's the other thing. It's kind like, of a low scoring. How do you meta score those still. buys? Do you give them full points? Do got, you give them half? I mean, points? they got like, full points, which is wild. Yeah, especially Insane. in that. Because, yeah, with the way the game looked. Yeah, yeah, in a, like in a game where you might be playing triple apoc and win against your opponent with only thirty points. The guy that didn't have to play that round and got a win and 300, he's sitting a lot Way better than you did. are at that point. Well, and who was it? Not to like call anybody out, but there was some player that had gotten, like, after the first like four rounds or five rounds, whatever, they didn't even score more than 300 points. They got all wins, yeah, but they didn't score more than their actual buy. They think they had like 450 points by the end of like all, but they got yeah. all wins. It was wild. It was just really tight, low scoring wins. I mean, I I would 
A lot of people. I did. would wager that might have been a triple APOC team because there was a yeah. few. So APOC are like a Thanos they, build or they something. Really, yeah. yeah, they were. They're good at shutting down, getting scored on, but uh, not scoring a bunch on their own. Right. Um, no, I definitely think that uh, making silver more important is one thing, and then to do that, we have to figure out like the WKO slash ROC, whatever they're called, points. And we have to make that system worth something. Like, I don't know if it's, you know, you hit the cap, you get a convention exclusive and a buy. Ooh. That makes people, like, you know, one, want to go to Worlds to, like, cash in their You get an auto, get a free thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, and it could be, like, something that they just, like, toss out. Like, not, not, it doesn't have to be, like, the two by two of that year or whatever. But something they just, like, toss in or, like, a random one or whatever. Um that encourages me to one play in the silver age format so I can get those points. And then every year after worlds, the slates like wiped clean. There's no reason at this point, zero reason to keep holding over like wins and stuff because yeah, having like a five time, uh, like five times the amount that I need to qualify for something makes no sense. It never makes sense to like be over qualified like that yeah. for a game like this. Like what am I doing with the extra points? What like they're not worth anything. They're non-refundable. There's no cash value. So like why have them? But yeah, I that was a long way of saying that uh hopefully they don't rotate it like that cuz I don't want to deal with the blowback that like the community will see. I don't want to see people like rage quitting the game because they yeah. rotated everything but at the same time personally i think that would be a better move and i think that's what i would like to see because i guess being a more golden age casual player i don't have that kind of it doesn't matter investment. to you yeah you know if they rotate everything okay yeah i can still play whatever like, at my venue i've always said that when rotation happens like people will be like oh like this is gone and i'm like it's never gone for me no i literally just keep playing it I always had like I've been yeah. playing wild you know, idea. WWE and it's been rotated you know? for ever now. Yeah, you and your buddy can literally always play any hero clicks ever if I wanted to. Yikes! I could play Marrow <laughs> if I wanted to. I could play Marrow from Infinity Challenge or whatever she's rookie from. Rookie Marrow. Rookie Marrow from yeah that set i could play it right now you and I could literally play a game. Her versus Prodigy from AF. You know, like yeah. does not matter. Beautiful, but yeah. So they, they end the article, and I love this. They, they not only hit us with it, number one, we've already talked for so long about this article because it's a really interesting, thought-provoking, interesting topic of discussion. But then they're like, here's a little sweetener. Here's yeah. a little something for all you guys for making it to the end of the article. They show us a sculpt from Avengers 60th who's who's this funny little little clown girl, little mime. I know who she is, and is I'm pumped. The, is that the Harley Quinn? Holy smokes, no, Simi. It's from Avengers. There's oh. no Harley Quinn in, a, in the Marvel Oh. Who who could this is this uh, is is this Miss whoever the clown uh, I don't know if you've seen her videos on Instagram but she's like a, she's a clown real estate agent oh, that's literally sure. her her <laughs> super niche videos is that she's a clown who does real estate <laughs> it's very weird no this is screaming Mimi you might people are like who the heck is screaming Mimi A K A what is her real Songbird. name Songbird yeah. thank you I know her as screaming Mimi because. Yeah. In most of the comics I read, it's in the 80s and 90s, Mark Grunewald, Captain America, that is who Songbird is, is screaming Mimi. But every version of her ever in Heroclix has been Songbird, with like the purple wings and the, the construct stuff yeah, and in the black constructs. and white costume. But this, this is who I know her as, and that's screaming Mimi. And I love that we get a screaming Mimi. Because it's because it's awesome. It's her classic costume. It's her weird green like skirt outfit and everything. And I'm just I'm so pumped that we're getting more like. And another thing, she was also in Superhero Squad, and she's screaming, "Yeah, really? yeah, bro!" One of the coolest TV wow. shows ever. If you haven't yet seen Superhero Squad, it is a kid show, but I it's also haven't. it's the weirdest combination of Avengers for like it's, it's like Thor, Iron Man, but Cap isn't on the main team. He only shows up on occasion, and then it's Reptil. He they he was introduced as a character for the show, right? And then Falcon, and then Hulk and Wolverine, and like I that's could the swear team. Swear that like all the promotional stuff I see for it has Cap. Oh, Cap's there. There. Okay. Like he is in the show, but he fits this like like secretary role. He's always at like the computer and sends them on a mission. He's like sure. he's the kind of leader who's like, all right, guys, go for it. We have there's a few episodes where Cap is either the main focus or on the team, but rarely ever is he part of like the normal squaddies hmm. as you would you would call them. 
But yeah, Superhero Squad, that Screaming is, Mimi's, okay. that's the version we see of her. It's a good mix of like 80s, 90s Marvel comics for that show. And if you're if you're a fan of Marvel, you'll enjoy Superhero Squad. This is also now a Superhero Squad plug, but they have a great <laughs> Man Thing episode where every time and the Man Thing does anything, the announcer's like, whatever knows fear burns at the Man Thing's touch. And he's like, destroy just absolutely burning like exactly what he does in whatever yeah. world by night just melts people sure. it's, it's really funny and like reptile and iron man are walking through this ah, whatever we're not going to talk about it but <laughs> big big superhero squad plug it's two seasons it's MacGuffin. we have to collect the infinity fractals which is the split version of the infinity sword which is totally a thing yeah and then after that it's like we got the infinity fractals they're now the infinity stem gems and now thanos is here now we have to go collect the infinity gem you know like it's literally right. MacGuffin, MacGuffin the show but it's so fun it's such a great show every single time but anyways i digress screaming mimi is awesome and she's now like the i don't know she puts us at like 12 or 15 characters we've seen from avengers 60th yeah and i like deep cuts like this so i hope we get more old school villains of, did, or new looks that we haven't seen before how did they plug uh, avengers 60th i know they said something about more villains it from, was like was avengers masters of evil stuff like that is kind of what they said okay. i believe they mentioned like the masters of evil and whatever. i know when when they uh announced avengers forever uh, Screaming Mimi was actually a character. Screaming Mimi, but more so, um, Songbird was a character that I was like, hmm. Like, I looked up like you know like the Avengers Forever comic line, and like the OG one was Rick Jones collecting Doing all sorts heroes of wacky from stuff, like time, yeah. and one of them was uh, Songbird. Oh, nice. Or I think so. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. But anyhow, um, so it's just interesting that she's appearing yet again. I guess yeah. First, uh, just but going this is the off first of, time we've ever had her in this costume. Avengers which is really 60th, cool. yeah. If we get some like, um, some different, I hope eras. we get just a ton of first appearance or yeah. like yeah, costumes or characters we've never seen before. That'd be great. I'd like to get because uh, Marvel Snap reasons. I'd like to get a new Arnim Zola. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's still. We have two of him, right? One super old one in the Deadpool yeah. set, and that's literally it. Yeah. I would still uh, love an MCU Arnim Zola. He's like a computer. Yeah, that's like in an actual robot body. Yeah. No, literally just a computer and a desk. Oh. Remember? Because that's what he is in Winter Soldier. Oh, like you, mean, and you mean you want a Heroclix version of the, of the MCU, MCU one? Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Oh, I thought you were saying like you want him in the MCU. No. As like no, a, okay. I want him to be a computer and a desk in Heroclix. That'd be so funny. Uh, I mean, it could work like Oracle or something. Yeah, exactly. Like there's characters just that chills. have worked like that. But yeah, we do need it. We're super over here for an Arnim Zola. We're super over here for Baron Strucker. Yeah, we basically just need a new Captain America set that's better than the 2020 <laughs> Captain America set with a really good Hydra. There was like no Hydra in that Captain America set, dude. Yeah, but it was like literally Red Skull, the one generic being the spy, and then like a handful of other people. But there Avengers was like, there Forever was no actually hy- gave Hydra. us way better way Hydra, more Hydra than. Oh, uh, are you kidding me? Yeah, than uh, the Cap set. Way did. more. Yeah, it probably gave us more bit Cap related stuff too. It did give us more Cap. Avengers Forever is a better Captain America and the Avengers set than Captain America and the Avengers. Yeah. I'm sorry, WizKids, but I'm <laughs> I, I still hate I hate that set to the day I die. You you did a Captain America title set and it was so terrible for actually Captain America. Yeah. Until we get the Captain America core. Spider Man and his amazing friends, and then there's like two Spider Mans and the rest are just like people he's teamed up with. So it's like <laughs> yeah. X Men, Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah when you do a spider-man set you guys you do it right you do the full center syndicate you do it like every spider person ever yeah you make five versions of peter parker do that but with the captain four America versions set. of daredevil four ver- mm. to be fair four we- versions of matt murdoch five yeah. versions of daredevil <laughs> if you count electra yeah 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 Any- anyways but i digress i digress that is the news this week that's it pretty simple stuff yeah make sure that uh this news actually just dropped today, so yeah, we we'll are just hot. Just randomly hot scroll through uh, Facebook to see if, for some reason, some more news dropped. Well, well while you're doing that, Simeon, I'm going to go ahead and say the International Player Foundation for the tournament on April 1st. The the date cut off is today, not today. Excuse me, it's the, the 26th. 26th. It's yep. Sunday, the 26th. So probably when you're, you're listening, listening to this, to this maybe. Maybe it the might day be after. it might be the day the day after the day before but this is your reminder that if you haven't signed up for that tournament it's only a $15 entry it's 300 modern age it'll be on the broadcast server you can donate whatever 
we'll get donations later. But right now, all you have to do is email Brad Broyles at Bradcast at the Bradcast Show dot gmail at gmail dot com or whatever it is. We'll have all the information for you on the IPF Facebook page. But if you want to support the International Player Foundation, the goal of the International Player Foundation is to get international players from all over the world to Worlds this year to Memphis, Tennessee. So it's going to be stuff like helping cover their flights, you know, travel costs, whatever, to actually get them here. So right. potentially even. Um, well, hopefully, not just a flight, but also uh, like board them like while they're hotel here. So, like, yeah. Hotel, yeah, yeah, uh, because that would be the two like most expensive costs for somebody coming here. Right. Um, obviously, the flights like the number one barrier, but it's big. Yeah, if if somebody can fly here but can't afford to stay here, it doesn't really help them. Don't want to have them sleeping on the streets of Memphis. Yeah. Like, oh no, <laughs> sleeping next to the, like their pile of hero clicks that they're gonna play. Yikes. Uh, maybe a little. What's the terminal with uh, Tom Hanks? They'll just live inside of the convention center. It's like, all right, everybody, like we're closing down for the night, and they're like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom real quick, and they just like hide in a stall until everyone's there. gone, and they yeah. just, oh, yeah, we don't want that. Is nope. what we're saying. <laughs> so, uh, and also, if you are an international player and you were like, well, how can I potentially get my trip to America funded for Worlds? You can message the IPF or the Dial H for HeroClix Facebook pages and we're doing submissions where you send in about a minute or so video explaining your situation, explaining how you would like to try to get to Worlds and why we should choose you to get to Worlds. Right now, we already have one person picked out from last year who we are going to be trying to get to Worlds, but we've received one other submission from Edison Lee uh, which is amazingly well done video. It blew my mind when I saw it. Um, and I've about seen him. him I've seen him around the community before. I've yeah, never interacted with him. But um, when like Singapore was doing their nationals and stuff, I was like, "Holy cow! Like, look how cool that setup is!" Like, it's I know really we. Cool. I don't All know if we talked about it on the podcast, but we definitely were like, "Wow, they did like an awesome job for their nationals." And uh, yeah, he's like the guy that's basically holding everything together there as far as i can tell i don't know i'm not part of the scene there but um, yeah yeah so another like worthy contender we definitely want to like get here and if those are the only two applicants then uh maybe they both get here but yeah. you know don't let that hamper you like definitely send in your reasons and you know this is going forward as well so if you don't get picked one year it's always possible that you'll get picked the next year yeah. and if we do get enough submissions and we have more submissions than we have donations to give to people, then we'll be setting it to like a community vote, which maybe that's not the greatest way to do it because people can pick favorites or whatever, but we literally have no other unbiased way that we can do it. Yeah. And we don't want to be beholden to like picking our favorites. So if we get enough people sending in submissions, then it'll be up to the rest of the hero clicks world to decide who gets to come. Um, and that's just, you know, just is what it is at some yeah. point. It'd be cool if we could do a bracket series like across that the world, be, like that nationals. Really awesome. But that's just way too much to yeah. try and plan for right now. This so. is the this is our origin. This is the first year. This is our launch. Right. We're just trying to make it happen in the first place. Not doing anything crazy or super fancy. We're doing a tournament, which please enter that tournament. There's resources all over the place for you to try to find information on it. The IPF Facebook page, the Dial H Facebook page, etc. If you noticed we are kind of not even plugging the Patreon anymore. I don't want you to donate money if that money could go to the IPF instead. You know, I don't even don't even care about our Patreon right now. I only care about trying to get international players to worlds. That's that's my main goal and focus. If you want to, you can. But the biggest thing is even if you're if you even thought about becoming a new like Dial H Patreon member for all the cool things we have, again, not plugging it. Instead, go to the IPF and donate to the IPF because I would love to see international players at worlds this year. Also, if you don't have time to play in the tournament, you can just donate if you just want to do a normal donation. But we also are going to be doing live streams every Sunday now, where during the live stream, we'll do a big one for the IPF. But I think with these new live streams we're doing, we'll do small donations that you can make to the IPF. And then we'll do something because of your donation on the live stream. We'll be able to see that in real right. time as well. So definitely think about joining us on the YouTube channel, 6 p.m.-ish central standard time on sunday and then during those live streams if you donate to the ipf you can choose like a topic of discussion uh ask us a question maybe a chair shot if that's in the cards yeah, etc kind of depends just kind of depends uh, we haven't ironed it all out yet but there we'll, will be something yeah, we'll be doing a much bigger like longer live stream where 
like last time we did something like this, uh, we were able to raise over a thousand, thousand bucks for some awesome charities, and, and that was great. Yeah, so we're we're shooting for like a similar thing, a similar theme, um, a similar like length of time, and some of the things that we ended up going with on that one were like, if you donated a certain amount, then you could join the live stream for like thirty a minutes bit. or something. Yeah, play uh, some bad Sam, etc. Yeah, and then you know we had towards the end we were just like yeah like just make up a challenge for us like say i'm a, i'm willing to donate this for you guys to do like that and uh we yeah. took a few of those there's some pitch us that we'll... some weird ones that we got but like we did uh we did get some decent donations because of that so we'll be doing that again i think those are a ton of fun uh it's definitely a long recovery period the day after oh my gosh but, no kidding. uh yeah <laughs> the taking shots of hot sauce wasn't fun no burned no but all right guys that's basically all we have for the episode i'm excited about worlds i'm excited about silver age and seeing everything that happens i'm really excited for avengers 60th now knowing that my girl screaming memes in it so that's really cool so yeah i'm just overall it's really cool news and it wasn't a long episode this week so hopefully you guys let us know also if you enjoy these short episodes of the podcast where it's kind of quick to the point you know we just talk about one little topic of discussion and we keep it rolling. But if you want to stay up to date with Dial H for Hero Clicks, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and if you ever have any questions for the show, you can go ahead and email us at Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. And of course, we have a ton of YouTube videos right now. We have our How to Play series that is happening, uh, some simple getting started videos. Just today, we came out with a video that was all about me and Simeon playing a full game with all the new rules articles that came out. A little dated, but still, all the rules articles are still the rules on how they're being played, and we just play a full game like that. We also go over the rules articles, and there's links to all of them in that game's description, which is really, really cool. And we're going to have more unboxings and gameplay coming up on YouTube. We are making like two or three main videos a week, as well as all these great shorts, which are just quick little reminders on how these standard powers and abilities work for Heroclix characters. So we are just cranking out that content, guys. So if you want to see a ton of YouTube videos like that, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Dial H for Heroclix, YouTube.com. Yeah, to stay up to date with everything that's going on. If you don't keep a PAC with you, it's a good reason to subscribe to our YouTube because... uh, yeah, you want to see like how Mastermind works. You just watch that video, and it is explained, and then there's a quick little uh, reference of like how it works in on like an actual game board. So they're all under a minute because they have to be because they're YouTube shorts. That's right. So you know that you're, it's not a huge time investment. And yeah, honestly, I don't use them personally because I helped make them, but uh, <laughs> I can see why they'd be like a good resource. Uh, you know, if I if I don't have my PAC on me, or I mean, definitely as like a kind and of all just venue judge in like, a playlist you know? too which is really great and yeah we read the power text even if you just want to see the power text it's like in the first like five seconds of the video we have the entire text of the power on screen if you want to just i'm gonna screenshot it really quick whenever somebody calls judge and asks like specifically how to, how a power works instead of like how a game like core rule book thing works um play that video i'm yeah i'm gonna say <laughs> well are you subscribed to dial h time to look at their shorts which which one are you uh you're looking up you want to know how blades works well, that's an attack power. It's the red one. Click on that. Watch that video. Any questions? Any questions? Like, yeah, I'll do the whatever David S. Pumpkins oh, thing. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> they're like, yeah, I'm just more confused now. Who's David S. Pumpkins? Anyhow, with all of that said, uh, Cool Stuff Inc. has all of their singles for Amazing Spider-Man, or Spider-Man Beyond Amazing. They have some amazing Spider-Man singles, Yeah, they have some amazing Spider-Man though. singles, too. Uh, they have all their, the singles for Spider-Man Beyond Amazing up. I know, personally, I picked up a handful of the hand generics. But I'm... Uh, yeah, and uh, also some of the symbiotes, because they actually dropped in price from when they first released them. So they were like seven ninety nine for each of the symbiotes, mm. and now they're I think four ninety nine or five ninety nine. But of course, using code dial five or spending a hundred dollars, that'll get you free shipping to spend a hundred dollars or more. And using code dial five will save you five percent at a minimum. You might even save more if you're like me and spend too much there, and so you have like fourteen percent off of singles or something. Yeah, singles I think. Uh, that's wild. Every time I say it, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. It does mess with my cart, though, because I go to check out, and then all of a sudden, like, my uh, price is for free it's, shipping uh, yeah, it's under, <laughs> like, $100 now, so I have to add more each time. That's how they get you. But anyhow, 
as I was saying, check out CoolStuffInc.com. They have the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products at CoolStuffInc.com. As always, guys, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Heroclix. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over oh, yeah. six How people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. They're going to be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's I'm going to make Heroclix like that forever.